A massive announcement from Onefinity CNC out in Las Vegas right now. They have just announced their 4x8 machine, as well as Redline controller. A lot's going on. Let's dive right in. Now, this is the 4x8 machine. Now, don't be confused. A lot of y'all actually already own this machine, and the bed is the upgrade that will turn into a 4x8 machine. I've seen online, uh, Mitz put out a video, he's there currently, and uh, it said something about a full eight. I don't know if that's actually what it's called or not, but it certainly seems like it is an upgrade to your existing machine. You can see right here, the bed moves, and then the cut continues. Now, it certainly seems like it is something that is kind of like automatic tiling rather than a traditional 4x8 machine. As you can see right here specifically, it's going to go and it's going to stop and then the bed is going to move and then it is going to resume its air carve. Now at all these shows and stuff, they set up air carves for a very long time just so that the machine is constantly moving so that people can come and look at it. But you see, everything stopped. The bed itself is moving, the bed will stop, and then it will resume its cut. It'll go down, I guess, find out where it left off, and then resume right there. Now, it's very similar, but not exactly the same as industrial machines, where the bed is moving and it is also cutting at the same time. But these are some industrial features that are not yet in the hobby CNC community, especially at this scale right here. So if you're brand new to the hobby CNC space, uh, what a time to, to be introduced into all of it, because there's this huge race to create affordable 4x8 capacity machines. Uh, CNC Labs right now is working on their version of the alt mill with a rack and pinion system so that they can easily ship it out to customers, um, especially when you start getting into larger systems like this. You can't really rely on your ball screw at the size and the price point <laughs> that everything is at uh, in the hobby CNC community to be able to fully create a traditional 4x8 machine which is why I think uh, when Finity came up with this system right here to be able to show off how things move. Now, this is Mitz's video, as you can see right here. Uh, he's currently out there. Uh, you can see a, a few of our familiar faces in the background of the hobby CNC community. And yeah, you can see that it is working with the Masso controller, which we'll get into the red line announcement in a second. But I mean, yeah, it's working. And right there, I don't know if Mitch just threw that in there, if that's actually the name. There's not really a lot, anything uh, official out there that you can go and kind of deep dive on this system. But I do want to be able to point out something that I saw specifically in this video that I don't think a lot of people have mentioned yet. And maybe it's just a little bit further right here. But you can see right here, we've got these cross braces now on the table. It looks like the current table that they offer, but just an upgraded version. We've got this shelf down on the bottom now, and I would assume that that does sure up the machine a whole lot. Like I said, we've got these cross prices going in different directions on either side, and then the bottom shelf, which hopefully will sure up the stand a whole lot. But I'm assuming that this is all just an upgrade to the current machine. There's absolutely no talks on pricing yet and what the upgrade paths look like or especially even uh, the timing around it. Uh, Winfinity has been kind of like clockwork every single year around Black Friday is when they come out with their new stuff. So I'm assuming that it will be either available to purchase or pre-order or whatever around that timeline. But I have no idea. I don't have this out in the shop right now. I've had a flood of people reach out asking for more details and kind of like a, a deep dive video on it here on the channel because they assume that it's in my shop. But it certainly is not. I found out exactly when everybody else did as well. Now, when we go into the Redline controller, this is something that is completely out of left field. Uh, yeah, Redline, who makes the spindle, also now makes a controller. And you can see right here a little bit of the interface. It's a pretty short video, but I really want to talk about uh, just how they have things set up, their simulations, their responsiveness of how quickly you're able to touch things. I don't know what that means as far as how responsive it is. Um, in the past, I've talked about G Cinder versus Masso and how quickly you can jog the machine versus when you press the button and the machine actually moves how on the Masso controller it is like seamless and it is very easy to do and on G-Sender it is just a tad behind. Uh, I'm really hoping that 
it is as seamless here on this red light controller like i said as it is on masso now they go over a few different things talking about the power supply closed loop uh, stepper support which is kind of becoming standard right now in the hobby cnc area which it wasn't even a year or two ago uh talking about all the things that you would hope to see on here uh feed and speed rate override which is really cool i do see some areas down here where it is talking about the the time um, maybe I'm just going over this too quickly, but hopefully it has a uh, job time estimation in there. And then down here you can see a little bit about free software and firmware updates. Uh, recently, uh, Masso came out with a big update talking about how uh, for a very specific use case, certainly not everybody, but specific use case, there was going to be a reoccurring charge monthly or yearly or whatever uh, for updates and very specific things in the Masso, um, I don't know, area. And I think that they're kind of pointing it out right here that it's just going to be free. I don't know if there will be any type of subscription service, but even after Masso did that uh, announcement, there was a pretty big backlash in the hobby CNC community, and then they rolled back on a few of the things they had talked about, finding a, a good uh, middle ground. So I think that's the reason that they brought that up here on the red line controller. And also joypad uh, support, meaning that you can use an Xbox controller. A lot of really cool things that you currently see um, through Masso and G-Sender. Glad that it's here. Obviously, like I said, a lot of this stuff is becoming uh, what people expect out of things as standard, which wasn't that way even a little bit ago. Now, currently uh, on Instagram, if you want to see more, I'm sure there's even stuff that I haven't seen yet as this video is coming out because all this was announced just yesterday in Las Vegas. Uh, they're just sharing a bunch of stuff so you can see exactly how it works. And like I said, it is hooked up at the Masso, so it doesn't look like it's anything to do with uh, Redline as like exclusive or anything like that. Uh, but yeah, uh, I think that a really interesting point besides the price is that you've got a 4x4 machine and then an 8 foot bed that's sliding back and forth, meaning that at bare minimum you're going to need uh, 12 feet of space. I would probably assume closer to 14. So if you've got like a this in your garage, this would kind of take up the exact space as a car being uh, in the center of the room, not really pressed up against a wall in the back because it would need to be able to go backwards and forwards, which is super super interesting how they've set all this up like I did say I do think that a lot of this is based on tiling so instead of you manually moving your material around um, and then setting up two different cuts it's all in the same cut as the machine goes back and forth uh, so that it is kind of like automatic tiling rather than a traditional 4x8 machine so yeah, I'm super interested to hear what everybody thinks about this. If you already have this uh, Infinity Elite Foreman, uh, you're probably going to want to upgrade to this, or at least I assume, but a lot of y'all already have this machine. Would you upgrade? What price point would make most sense to you? Or what price point is it just too expensive? Because once you jump into this, and let's say that you know, I'm pulling a number out of the middle of the air, I have no idea. Let's say it's a $2,000 upgrade and that makes your full setup closer to the eight to $10,000 area. Is that something that you think is worth it? Uh, are the other machines out there right now, the, the Avids, the Lagunas, the Onefinity, and then the eventual one from CNC Labs, the Altmill as well, uh, out of those uh, choices, what would you be going for? Uh, what do you think you gain from this? What do you think you lose from this? I would love to know everything about it because this is all brand new and there's just not a lot of official stuff out there yet to be able to really deep dive into and I'm really looking forward to that as well. Um, I thought about reaching out to Winfinity and kind of getting a, an official statement on this, but there's so much buzz happening right now and so many questions that I really just kind of wanted to start the conversation with y'all, especially with how many of y'all have been reaching out really uh, wanting, requesting, and at some points demanding uh, to be able to be shown more of this, which I don't have. I don't know. I'm finding this stuff out at the same time as y'all and uh, eager to talk more about it. I also don't really get the opportunity to do kind of like news stuff like this here on the channel. Uh, so I'm, I might be doing some more of this, but this one definitely seemed like it was worthy of sitting down, creating a short video and throwing it out there just to kind of keep the ball rolling about it. Um, yeah, hope y'all are having a good one and I'll be coming out with some projects very soon on the channel. I'll see y'all then. Bye.